Welcome again to 1 Peter. Today I want to read 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 1 to 3. So, I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and as a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker of, in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. There seem to be four things in this little section I think we should note. The first is, Peter is taking an entirely new direction. Yes, he's still talking to Christians who are being persecuted, but now he is talking to their leaders. The NIV simply says, so, but the word could be translated, Therefore, because of what I have been saying, I now want to speak to the leaders because Christians under persecution need care for their leaders. All harassed, struggling Christians need the ministry of their leaders. That's the way God has put it all together. And Peter knows two things that describe our Christian life. We live between the sufferings of Jesus and the glory that is be, that will be revealed. At the moment, the sufferings of Jesus fall upon his people often, and we are looking forward to the more than sufficient reward that will happen when Jesus returns and we share in his glory. So Peter is speaking to leaders with that framework. Peter, in verse 2, in the early part of it, has a command. So what does he want them to do? Shepherd the flock of God that is among you. The word shepherd, care for, could well be given as, it could well be understood as a command, as an imperative. So, if you are the leader of the people of God, if you share pastoral oversight, then shepherd them, really care for them. And remember who they are you care for. They are called the flock of God, an honoured name in the Bible the great shepherd chapter of the whole Bible almost, is Ezekiel chapter 34, where you can see God's concern for his, she for his sheep and his distress when his sheep are not cared for. Shepherd the flock that is among you. Yes, those ordinary struggling Christians that are part of your congregation or your home group or your circle of Christian friends. Yes, they too are the flock of God and he wants them to be cared for. Do it as God would have you, says Peter. As God would have you do it. Imagine God's compassion for his sheep. This leads Peter in the latter part of verse 2 and in verse 3 to some practical directions. Very well, Peter. It's very nice to talk about shepherding the flock. But how do you actually do it? Well, Peter says, I've arranged my teaching in three groups of two ideas. First, don't behave as you care for them like a person who does it because he's compelled to do so, but as a person who does so willingly. So 
pastoral care should be something which is obviously done voluntarily. The person who does this does it not because he has to, but because he delights to do so, he volunteers to do so, he does so of his own choice. Let it be that sort of thing, says Peter. The second two are not for, it looks, the word really means financial gain. Peter does not, and the New Testament does not mind and thinks it proper that um, Christians be, that leaders be cared for, uh, for exercising their ministry. But he's saying the gain should not be this, the, the important thing. Don't do it for what you may get in terms of money. Well, that's not usually a big concern for Christian ministers who are not that well paid. But do it or for the sort of prestige or other sort of gain there may be. But do it. Peter uses a word which really means with warmth and enthusiasm. The NIV, uh, ESV translates it eagerly. So let there be zeal. Do it earnestly. Do it with alacrity. So here are people who care and have care and have great joy in serving the people of God. Peter saying, be like that to your persecuted people, to your people that are going to be called into account um, to give a reason for their faith and may be insulted and abused. And the third one is not lording it over, not bossing or controlling the people of God. The pastor's job is not to do that, not to boss or control them, but rather to model how difficulties in the Christian life are to be faced. And that's why people like to see their leaders. It's good for their Christian growth. It's God's command for their Christian growth that those who lead them and teach them um, should also be their pastors, should care for them like shepherds, caring for very weak, straggling sheep. So Peter says, the work's to be done that way. So where can we go from here? I want to save the next verse till next time, but we can learn two things from this, I think. The first is, please pray for your ministers. Sometimes people think that when they pray, they can leave the need of the minister and those who serve full-time or nearly full-time um, simply on automatic. They should know how to look after themselves. Haven't they been through theological college or something? No, not a bit of it. They've got the same sort of temptations as you do as a Christian. So therefore, pray. Use a passage like this to pray that those who minister to you will grow pastorally and that the Church of God will grow because of it and survive and thrive in its trials. And the second thing that a passage like this might raise for us is, who should I be caring for? Are there, for example, people in your congregation, in your home group, just two or three of them, that you should take a special interest in caring for, in hearing their needs, um, in praying with them, uh, in watching over them. Because I think pastoral care in the modern church can't just be what the minister does. There's a great scope for others as well. God grant that a passage like this might live in our heads and hearts and shape the ministry that we have to one another. And that there would be not only more Christians caring for one another, but also that 
those who care for us in a professional sort of way would be better and more prayerfully supported. That would be a great outcome. God bring this to pass. Amen.